evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Crazy Zach, and I'm bringing you all the hits and misses here in Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Now, if you remember last time, we got through trial day, but we were unable to secure a victory uh, for our client or convict him because that's what we're trying to do in some way, shape, or form because we haven't found Maya yet. So, uh, we're getting a, a document checked out, and then we're going to go ahead and see what happens from there. Let's get to it. By the way, guys, if you guys want to catch episodes of, you know, these live, you want to check out that Twitch channel. Every Saturday, 4 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard, over there at twitch.tv uh, slash TCW Crazy Zaku. I would love to see you there. And if not, that's cool. You can catch him here on YouTube. And I, you know, I'm happy to see you guys here all the time. Let's get started right here. All right, I gotta get into my characters. <laughs> March 23rd, 2.35 p.m. District Courtroom, number three. Court now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I can understand an offense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Miss Edgeworth? I. That is. It's nothing, Your Honor. <laughs> What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impact's suicide note. Uh, yes, Your, Your Honor. Uh, unfortunately, we have discovered that this suicide note is indeed a forgery. What? What, what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This, this note was not written by Miss Impact herself. It is a fake. Order! Order! Miss Edgeworth, would you care to explain what's going on here? If this was not written by Miss Impacts, then who wrote it? Oh, we would need more time to do a more detailed an analysis. However, it appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corda. Oh. M Mr. Corda? Well, well. It looks like Miss Impacts never left a suicide note at all. She never wrote anything about him, guard. However, Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. Ungard could not have known. I uh, could not have known that, and so the facts remain unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. It does indeed sound very plausible. This theory that Ingard has no idea that Suicide Note is a fake? Something seems a little wrong with it. Just stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up to this point is true, then it's possible for Mr. Ungar to not have known it was a fake. Take that! What is th what is this little item called again? Um, a, a video camera, Your Honor. Well, a very small one, but oh, that's right, a camera. Ah, oh, you kids and your fancy toys nowadays. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Ungard knew of the existence of this note because he was spying on the victim, isn't that right? If that were true... Well, that means Mr. Ungard would have known that the victim had forged the note! Uh. So then the defendant knew that suicide note was a fake? 
And if that's true, then this situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Guard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But, Your Honor, it's not as, as if Mr. Guard monitored Mr. Corda 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in place in a place Mr. Ungar didn't know of. Right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Ah! Uh. Rubble, 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 rubble. Order, order, Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. Oh, uh, as I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured. It came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what's next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ungard's motive through evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. Uh, Edward stuttering? This is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is the is uh, one who pit, uh, this witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley the killer to commit the murder? I can read, folks. Uh, that's impossible. Who in the no such person exists who can answer the question with such certainty? Uh, y yes, Miss Edgeworth. Who, who is this witness? It is... It's... Um... Yes? Go on. Who is it? The man himself. Mr. Shelley DeKiller. Oh, Mr. DeKiller. What? what wait! Shelley DeKiller? These names are so dumb. Um, you mean the killer? Er... I mean the assassin. Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here. To the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright? I yes? Is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. Very well then, the prosecution calls his witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? Now then, witness, um, your name and your, uh, occupation, please? Very good, sir. My name is Shelly Tequila and I am a professional assassin. I say, what is going on here? Your Honor, how can you remain so calm and what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now and it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, so Mr. De Killer will testify to this court. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. Uh, Mr. DeKiller himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof that you are, in fact, Shelley DeKiller. I understand. Please, wait a second. I'm so hungry. M M Maya! Maya! A voice! Mr. Wright, can you can confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelly the Killer. Looks like we've run into yet another unexpected turn of events. Well, it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances, so... Uh, now then, witness, there is one thing I would like to confirm before we uh, speak of anything else. And what would that be? 
At the request of the client, you killed Mr. Juan Corda, is that correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corda. Oh. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Uh, very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it, a bad dream. Shelly the Killer. What is he going to say? About my client. There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. You didn't testify to shit, motherfucker! Hmm. Mr. The Killer seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. The Killer is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite, and he's always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? Huh. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine this witness? Y yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. The trust between you and your client? I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it'd be quite troublesome. And that's why you're testifying in this manner? This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did, yes, that person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly. That, that, that's enough. Please, please, no more. Very well. It was only a hypothetical, anyway. Hold it. That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would like. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their previously described role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You. Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? Uh, to the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, but would you care to die? Uh, no, no, I, uh, I didn't say anything, uh... I judge you better watch yourself. Hold it! Seems a little strange to me. I'm out of the hotel, it's climbing, and I think it would be very bad for them, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter to me. I don't know. You. Between you and your client, I provide my services in a fast, efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. These are the roles and duties an assassin and his clients are to carry out. I'm sorry, but I was wondering about something you just said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you can betray this person? I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Oh, just my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, uh, do you think you can understand my logic? These cases keep getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Uh, really. Oh, in that case, I believe that I'm prepared to disclose the information you seek. 
You've made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. That is the reason I am here today on the witness stand. Hold it. Oh, what is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask Miss Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corner? Oh. That person's name is... Adrian Andrews. What? What? Objection! Witness! That's not who you told me it was earlier. Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. Wh what? Th this can't be. O on the phone earlier. Wh what's going on here? My guess is Mr. Killer just stabbed Mr. Edgework in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court. Mr. Achille told him a different name. Matt Ungard, perhaps? I knew it. Objection! Miss, this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. But, but, you're the one who summoned this witness. Oh, uh, you, Shelly the Killer. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt Ungard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. Hey! <sighs> wow. All of a sudden it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided a suicide note which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we've heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. Mr. The Killer's client who, was, who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. N no. With all this evidence, it's obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt Ungard is innocent. <laughs> I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Uh, please continue your discussion and call me when you've reached a verdict. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going, Ungard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. And Ungard, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Sheldon Killing is certainly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now. It was all one big lie. M Miss Andrews, the suicide note may have been a fake, but. That man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died, and Juan's death it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. Dekilla himself just testified, and he's named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there's quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife... And the button, donning the Nickel Samurai costume. But that's... That's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste impacted the large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who, who hurt you. I would say you have plenty of reason to want them both dead. I... No. M Mr. Wright... You, you know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them. Please. Help me. 
Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I believe we've reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? Well, what am I supposed to do? You guys are gonna have to find out what I do next time. Because I'm gonna go ahead and call this an episode right here next time. We are gonna either request a verdict or request the trial continue. Will I just save Maya or will I decide that I need to prove that, you know, this person, uh, that, you know, Shelly DeKiller was lying about who his client was. Hope you guys will join me for that. In the meantime, folks, my name is Crazy Zaku. Brought you all the hits and misses here. And let's play Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. Please share this video with your friends, your family, your loved ones, your enemies, and everyone in between. Drop a DDT on that like button. Cover for the three. Smack that subscribe button like it owes you some money. Tingle that bell wherever it happens to be. To stay up to date with all of our adventures here in and out of the courtroom. And I will see you guys later. Later.